Okay, good morning and uh, welcome to this uh, course on real time systems. Uh, today we will have some introductory discussion on real time systems and we will see what are the topics and so on. Possibly in the subsequent lectures we will discuss in more detail. So, uh, let me just introduce myself because some of you I am teaching for the first time. So, I am a professor at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering IIT Khadakpur, been with IIT Khadakpur for last about 16 years and uh, before that worked with uh, Motorola India and uh, completed uh, all my education, bachelors, masters and PhD from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore and as the course proceeds possibly based on the questions you ask, uh, we will just let get to know you about you, your name and so on. So, let us uh, start, let us look at the plan of the course. We will have uh, one or two or maximum three lectures on introduction and then we will look at some very basics of real time operating systems because that is the major emphasis of the course real time operating systems and as we will see that uh, scheduling tasks is one of the major issues in any real time operating system. We will look at uniprocessors how tasks are scheduled. There is uh, quite a bit of theory developed over the years for task scheduling in uniprocessors. Uh, possibly you have done in an operating system course, basic operating system course, how tasks are scheduled in a traditional operating system. We will see that here is different, we will we'll observe the difference and we will look at multiprocessor and distributed system. We will look at resource sharing issues and uh, after that we will look at commercial real time operating systems some of the operating systems that are actually used in different organizations. And then we will look at real time communications because nowadays most of the real time systems they have uh, they communicate with other devices or maybe on the internet. So, we will see how real time communication can be supported and then we will look at real time databases because increasingly more and more these systems are using databases to store data about their environment, process them in real time. As you can see the plan of the course, it is mostly deals with uh, software issues. We will restrict the hardware issues to minimum. We cannot really avoid in such a course some hardware issues, but we will restrict that. Otherwise, the course will be too large. So, the textbook will be a book I wrote on real time systems in 2008 Pearson publication and uh, the book will be supplemented with some handouts that I will give you periodically. Now, let us look at the grading issues because in any course grading is important. Class test 1 will have 10 percent weightage which will occur sometime end January, mid semester will have 25 percent weightage sometime around end February, class test 2 will have 10 percent weightage sometime end March and uh, the end semester will have 50 percent weightage sometime in the end April. So, as you can see that almost every month end we have one test or other just to keep track whether you are following the course or if there are any specific difficulties, we will give you feedback on your performance. And uh, another thing that we will follow here is that as the course proceeds, we will pose you some problems. The problems are not there, I mean the answers are not there in the book, neither can easily get them on a Google search or something, basically you will have to think. So, those who are able to do those problems will have additional mark more than this whatever is displayed here. So, that will be added to the total more than this 100 percent. So, 
based on the 100 percent and the IIT grading scheme like uh, all of you are familiar 90 above EX etcetera we will follow that. But one thing is yes please. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. I think uh, he has pointed out good thing that we have only 10, 25, 10, 50 is 95 and he says that 5 percent are not mentioned. Yes, 5 percent is an attendance. Yeah, possibly I should have written here that uh, just to encourage you to attend every class, we will have 5 percent weight is given to attendance. If you attend all classes, 5 percent is assured. Actually, grading <coughs> as uh, you know that uh, grades are not really a indicator of the intellectual capability or something because even the best students can score poorly, they do not study, do not attend classes. As long as you are putting effort on these scores, keeping track with the lectures should be able to get good grades. So, let us uh, look at how the technology has ab advanced over the years. We will see where the real time systems come in. In the 1960s, the computers were basically mainframes, extremely expensive computers. Hardly an organization or institute own one and uh, the students or the employees will use that and uh, these real time systems and embedded systems did not exist those days because they were extremely expensive for everyday use. And then we in the 70s we had mini computers, these were also expensive and in 1980s we had the personal computers where the cost dropped dramatically and computers got used across various domains and this is the period where the embedded and real time systems the use started to increase and in 90s we had the mobile phones and internet this was the revolution in 90s suddenly everybody started using internet and mobile phones as you know appeared around in india 95 or something and then now you know everybody owns a mobile phone students or a shopkeeper or even the rickshaw pullers in kharagpur they own a mobile phone and uh, now, one thing that is clear now is that uh, embedded devices that is uh, after 2000, these are vastly outnumbering the traditional computers. So, if you look at the number of processors manufactured worldwide, the number of processors being deployed in embedded devices is about 70 percent of the processors manufactured. And, uh, we now have internet enabled embedded devices. For example, through the internet you can download code onto your devices, they are connected, you can control them on the inter internet. So, we will we'll look at this as we proceed, we will look at several examples of this. So, the embedded devices are basically we use real time operating systems, they are a time type of real time systems. We will see what are these real time systems, real time operating systems, some basic concepts about that. So, as uh, we just saw that the embedded systems are being increasingly used in new applications and all these have real time in nature in the sense that based on some events, the action must take place within certain time the number of processors that are manufactured worldwide now outnumber vastly outnumber i think i said about more than 70% that's the statistics published out of the total processors manufactured more than 70% being used for embedded applications but over the years why is there a surge in use of embedded applications there are many reasons actually which have contributed to this trend of uh, increasing use of embedded applications. One is of course, the cost of the computers has decreased over the years. 
from million rupees to few thousand rupees over about 30 years or so. The processor cost has decreased, memory cost has decreased dramatically both the semiconductor memory as well as the magnetic memory. And as you will see that in real time systems actually the magnetic memories are not used that much. We have the flash memories that are being used. <clears throat> and then the flexibility that has come about due to the use of internet, the embedded devices even though they are small and many in number, but you can easily configure them, you can maintain them through internet. And uh, another important factor that has uh, helped increase the embedded application is the reducing power consumption that is seen over the years. Actually, many of these embedded applications, they are battery powered and uh, the unless they consume less power, no, they would not be usable. And the size has reduced from the size of a room to the size of a very small size and <clears throat> we have uh, not only that, we have increased processing power and uh, the reliability of both hardware and software has increased considerably over this period of time. Now, let us see some examples of these applications, so that our later discussions will fall into place. Like when we say, say that some kind of applications, we use a time based scheduling and in some other applications we use a event based scheduling, why etcetera that will become clear and even databases, communications and so on. We have large number of examples, we examine actually a few examples here, the set of boxes, mobile phones, iPods, PDAs etcetera are all examples of embedded systems and we will see that they use various types of real time operating systems. One example is the modern car, a high end car can use uh, more than 100 processors which are embedded in various parts of the car and complex software run on this and some of the high end cars have uh, code up to a million lines. Now, what do these uh, processors do? They do engine and emission control, traction, carrying out some diagnostics and giving early warning of problems, automatic transmission and so on. So, as you can see here that uh, there are processors at various places in a car which uh, do various activities. Even I, I think uh, it would not be wrong to say that in the present time, you would not find a car on the road which uh, does not have processors in them. There are large number of embedded systems and the ones that run these real time operating systems. Some of them are difficult to, I mean, unless we say that these are devices which have computers, which have processors and software, real time operating system, you will not really notice them. For example, look at this laser printer, use it every day, but there is a processor which does some activities, we will we'll look at that. For example, let us say these uh, toys or a coffee machine or a phone, handheld phone or a radar or a internet router all have, uh, all use, yes please. What is the difference between a processor and a computer and a processor in such devices? What are the processors? Why is this called a real time system? Okay, yeah. See, the question is that, let me just get the question all right, that uh, there are even in a PC or something, we have a processor 
and we have software running on it which are computers basically. So, what is special about these devices? Why do we call these as real time systems? Okay. So, that is a very basic question and we have some slides coming up on that because that is the fundamental question we must answer that what is the basic difference between a PC or a mini computer or a workstation versus a real time system. We, we have some slides. So, let us uh, try to answer this with the help of slides. Uh, just have patience for a minute or so. Now, let us see what is this real time. Then we will look at what is real time system. One is that in a real time is one where we quantitatively measure time using a physical clock. In the contrast, we have a qualitative time where we say that something occurred before something, we do not know how, how much before or something occurred after or something will occur sometime, something will occur eventually. If you use these terms to describe a system, it will be non-real time. Whereas, if you say that a certain event occurs, for example, in a a chemical plant that when the temperature exceeds 500 degree centigrade, the corresponding action that is uh, a coolant sour should complete within 100 millisecond of the temperature exceeding. So, we have a notion of time here with respect to a physical clock which measures this 100 millisecond. We will see more examples and we will also contrast this with uh, traditional computers. Now, let us look at uh, some of the applications. We have uh, large number of applications. We will not mention all of them, it will consume all our time if we just try to discuss these applications. We will just give some example applications in each area and uh, possibly in a later slides, we will just uh, look at couple of them in some detail. The idea is that we will try to find out what kind of tasks they run and what is the timing constraint on those tasks. Uh, let us look at the industrial applications. A chemical plant control, as we are saying that a chemical plant has many parameters. The rate of chemical reaction depends on the chemical concentration, the temperature and the pressure and based on these parameters changing, the rate of the reaction might vary. So, to control the reaction, we will have to monitor these parameters and then also control these parameters for the chemical plant to operate. <coughs> uh, let us look at a automated plant. Let us say, let us take an example of a car assembly plant. I do not know whether you would have gone to a modern car assembly plant, where many of the activities are automated. Uh, you, you find, you go to a car assembly plant and find that you know, there are very few persons there visible, but there are systems, there are uh, partly completed parts of the car moving on a conveyor belt and there are workstations, where the workstations are doing work on these partly completed parts of the car. So, here there is there is a computer control of uh, these various workstations and also the synchronization between these various workstations. Supervisory control and data acquisition, this is a very important industrial application where you monitor various parameters of a system which is distributed. Just to give an example would be an energy management system, where uh, you try to balance the load in an electrical system, because the consumption by the customers is unpredictable. And uh, unless the electrical power is balanced, the line will trip, right. So, you will have to monitor the power consumption and apply load shedding and also give this feedback to the generator possibly to keep up with the power generation. In 
medical most of the medical equipments actually use processors and software medical electronics is a important area for real time systems another use may be use of robots to do uh, there were reports in newspaper that robots are even able to do some operations for precision and uh, some activities which are difficult by human beings being done by robots for example let's say radioactive treatment and sometimes the radioactive material gets displaced from the machine a human can go and put it back it will be a robo which uh, sets the material at its right position different peripheral equipments now we see that are attached to a computer most of them have embedded applications for example laser printer use them every day but don't what we don't see is that the processor that is there and the activities it does to give us this nice print we don't see that similarly digital cameras get signals and processes them and stores them later transfer to computer camcorders some types of sensors similarly in the transportation these are used heavily the mpfi system now i think all the cars to be road worthy they have to use an mpfi system because they reduce the pollution here the idea is that when a computer controls the exact uh, fuel quantity and the time of injection of the fuel the car will run at maximum efficiency so at multiple points the fuel is injected depending on the values of the car speed the acceleration and the other conditions like temperature and so on compared to a carburetor based system here the efficiency of uh, petrol efficiency of combustion is much higher and uh, this has made the carburetor system obsolete this we will see little bit about that and then the automated car where a car is driverless and being driven based on the sensed signals on specific roads so th there are reports that uh, the automated cars are able to cover distances up to 60 km i mean there is every year a competition for automated cars and uh, even on crowded streets uh, streets they are able to drive so possibly in few years we will have them in our streets as well telecommunication applications example important example is the cellular system the mobile phones that we use the base stations that are there which receive our signal from the mobile phone and give signal to the mobile phone they use real time operating systems they handle many tasks any time for example handling uh, sms messages handling call establishment keeping track of billing hand off to other base stations and so on similarly the mobile phone itself has a real time operating system we will have uh, quite some discussion on that later on the different activities that occur inside a mobile phone and uh, how these are handled and the kind of real time operating systems used in these mobile phones most of the aerospace applications now in indispensably have computers on board because these uh, reduce the uh, botherance of the pilot right they help them and sometimes even without pilot they can fly the aircraft the internet also uses many embedded systems i was just giving you an example of a router multimedia applications for example video conferencing handling the signal compressing transmitting receiving it on the other side real time because in video conferencing if uh, there is a uh, one frame to another frame if there is a uh, 
the time delay is not proper, you will see glitches and you will say that it is not working. So, these are also real time systems. Then consumer electronics like phones, digital cameras, camcorders, defense applications. In defense also these are used heavily including the wireless sensor networks. Now, let us look at couple of them in uh, slightly more detail just to know the kind of time constraints under which they will have to work and the kind of tasks that are involved. Let us look at the automotive application. So, 30 to 90 processors per car is nothing unusual that was in 2005 and uh, the kind of activities they do is engine control. I was saying that the fuel injection is one important work. The braking system, airbag deployment because in case there is accident within fraction of a second the airbag has to be deployed, it has to be inflated and it has to be deployed otherwise it is of no use. Even the wind, windshield wiper, these are even used processors depending on the rain intensity they can manage themselves without the driver intervening. The door locks, the entertainment systems, the diagnostics that run on this for example, measuring the tire pressure and giving early warning, measuring the health of the other critical parts. So, these are done by various processors. One example is a high end car the BMW 745i which has 2 million lines of code uses the windows CE operating system, uh, we will discuss this operating system in some detail later as we look at the commercial operating systems, commercial real time operating systems. It has uh, various types of processors, 53 8 bit processors, 11 32 bit processors and 7 16 bit processors and inside the car there are many networks. Now, this is another automotive application almost every car has this a multi point fuel injection system. Just see here there are different points at which the fuel is getting injected and uh, the quantity of the fuel and the time at which the fuel is to be injected is controlled by the computer. These are determined based on various signals received from different types of sensors we are saying that the sensors are the speed, the RPM uh, revolutions per minute, the temperature, the acceleration and so on. Earlier the mechanical system in a carburetor, you, know, you need to tune the car every once in a while. So, because that used to go out of uh, tune and uh, <coughs> it was inefficient, you cannot really do whatever is done by uh, sampling various events and then taking action based on that and quickly computing how much fuel to be injected and time to be injected and the different places see here multiple points where how much will be injected. A laser printer use them we have used them many times. But uh, there is a processor inside and uh, it does some activities. There is a horizontal strip of dots that needs to be composed. It, the basic capability is to print a dot and uh, if you have a postscript file or a text file or files in some specific I mean for different laser printers they have specific languages in which the fonts are specified. So, depending on the font that has to be translated to dots and uh, this is done by a image processor and then these are transferred onto a rotating drum inside the laser printer. The image is transferred in the form of charges and uh, a laser beam is used to neutralize charge from the black parts of the image, leaving only the static electric negative image on the photo photoreceptor surface. So, that when the 
ink powder is uh, spread it is uh, it gets attached only to the charged parts and then these are transferred to a paper through a, again through electric uh, deposition because there will be a opposite polarity electric charge which will get attract the electricity from the drum and it will get deposited on the paper and then the next thing is to fusion where you have this temperature now you see that paper coming out printed paper is hot because after the uh, ink is deposited the ink powder is deposited these are fused through heat onto the paper a mobile phone I think we did not uh, talk about the timing here. The timing if depends on the speed of the laser printer, but typically most of these tasks need to be completed in millisecond. Uh, so, is the case for a fuel injection system, milliseconds is the time for different tasks, tens of milliseconds to hundreds of milliseconds. A mobile phone, all of us have used it. So, wh why do we need an operating system and a processor in that? One is that to convert the voice to digital using DSP techniques and then convert the digital voice to signals that can be transmitted at the CDMA modulated signals, code division, multiple access, and also. Once the signal comes, this has to be converted to the microphone signals and uh, also see these are the signals which are the voice signals, but there are also some control signals that are received from the base station. For example, the position and when you are mobile, the base station needs to register a mobile phone or when you switch on a mobile phone there is a transmission on the control channel. Similarly, to hand, send an SMS or to handle user invoked functions, the user might do like set alarm or do several of the provided operations on a mobile phone. So, all these are handled by a processor. So, if you look at these different parts here, there is a memory, there is a processor here. Uh, unless I enlarge this image, you can not see this. But uh, as, as I said, a uh, le later part we will discuss in more detail. SCADA is an important industrial application, stands for supervisory control and data acquisition. So, the data arise at various places geographically and these data are collected at different places and even they might be stored at different places by a real time database. So, these form a distributed real time database and then the required information only is transmitted to the supervisor and uh, the supervisor can give commands to the different local uh, monitors to take certain corrective actions. As we are saying that one is an energy management system where you try to balance the load in electric lines or maybe a building management system where the timing at which the various lights are switched on and managing the power inside a large building is also a SCADA application. Computer on board an aircraft. So, as we are saying that the velocity, acceleration and altitude, these need to be sampled by using some sensors and based on these uh, values of velocity, acceleration and altitude, the position of the aircraft is computed and uh, the deviation from the required trajectory is computed. Based on the error in the trajectory plant trajectory and the current trajectory, some corrective actions need to be taken through the actuators. And again here, the rate at which I mean the 
constraints on the tasks will be again in the form of milliseconds. The rate at which these are sampled, the rate at which the tasks need to be completed of the order of milliseconds. A missile guidance system, this is a defense application where uh, let us say you, uh, the defense system senses a missile from an enemy and then send an anti-missile that is guided, it just tracks that missile and destroys it. It tracks it based on some thermal and electrical characteristics and once it tracks that, the trajectory of the track device is computed and then the track corrections are based so that it will directly meet that and destroy that. So, here the constraints are of the order of micro to few millisecond because these travel at very large speeds. So, the time also needs to be that much smaller, the activities must occur in microseconds. So, we saw some of the applications and found that in each of those applications, there are many tasks that need to be completed multiple tasks running at the same time and the constraints are of the order of milli to microseconds. Now, let us look at the trend in these kind of devices. So, one is that the computational demand on many of these devices is increasing rapidly. Just to give an example is a video conferencing where you want good quality picture and also voice among multiple participants. To be transmitted and heard, which is uh, very large compute intensive because all this image and data had to be transmitted at a very fast rate to give good quality. And similar is mobile TV or on your mobile phone, let us say you want to see TV. The mobile phone processor must be capable of processing the uh, signals and be able to show it. So, one is uh, the increasing computation demands need more, more powerful processors, the other is most of the devices now are networked. So, that we are able to remotely monitor and debug these various devices. We can see whether these are working in proper condition, have failed, we can know the reason they have failed, they can have even web connectivity web browsers for example, some cars have web browsers. We can have cameras, disks that are networked, you do not have to really plug them in to transfer data, they directly sit on the network and you can uh, download the data or get data from computers. And not only that, we have another constraint which we will also discuss while discussing about the real time operating systems is a commercial issue that uh, because of the increased competition, the different companies want to market their products the quickest possible and also specific hardware and software needs to be des designed for some of the applications, we will just see shortly about that. Now, let us see a basic model of an embedded system, because we, we just said that uh, embedded systems are a major category of application for real time operating systems. There are other applications of real time operating systems other than the embedded systems, even certain large computers might use uh, real time operating systems, but let us uh, look at an embedded system, because unless we have some idea of them, later discussions would not be very meaningful. So, what we every embedded system does is, it has sensors which it samples some signals, different sets of signals and the signals are either very low voltage low current or this, this may be a direct current 
direct voltage or this may be alternating. So, there are various types of voltage and signals that are sampled and therefore, we need a conditioning unit because our computer recognizes voltage and current at certain values. So, the input interface does that connects these sampled uh, voltage and current to the input interface and the real time computer they process this signal and of course, there is a human interface where these are monitored, configured and so on. But normally, the human interface is not used very frequently unlike in a traditional computer. Here the operator only intervenes only if there is a extraordinary situation or to conf initial configuration and so on. And uh, the actions of the computer are carried out by the actuators. Again, these require different amounts of voltage current as is produced by a computer. So, we need conditioning units, voltage scaling, uh, be able to drive a motor and so on. So, let us have some idea about the sensors because even though these are not crucial to real time operating systems or real time systems by themselves, but unless we have some idea, we do not know what kind of signals, what kind of voltage levels etcetera we are talking of. As we are saying that these sensors convert uh, physical characteristics into some electrical signals. One example is a photovoltaic, photovoltaic cell which uh, converts light energy into electric energy. The electric energy is in terms of millivolts, milliamperes or maybe microamperes. We can have temperature sensors which sense the temperature based on the thermocouple principle. There can be pressure sensor which uh, operate based on the piezoelectricity principle. Again all these generate some electric energy and uh, typically millivolts. We can have, we now commercially have several low cost sensors that are available the IR proximity server, the IR proximity sensor, the soft encoder, GPS, sonar, infrared distance sensor, electronic compass, CMOS camera. See the camera mounted here. So, these are various types of sensor you can buy off the self from shops and these are used to build the embedded systems. Th these are some of the actuators which uh, convert electrical signals from the computer into actions. The actions can be in the form of a motion changing the thermal characteristics or electrical characteristics, pressure, physical characteristics and so on. Some of the popular examples are motors, heaters, hydraulic and pneumatic actuators. So, there is no dearth of uh, examples for sensors and actuators, there are many of them. If you examine any device, let us say a camera or let us say a laser printer or let us say um, a mobile phone, you can see the different types of sensors and actuators that are needed. So, this is a low cost servo used in many applications including the robots. It is a small wireless device has a shaft and uh, this can be positioned at specific angular positions by sending a coded signal very popular in robots. So, as uh, the signal exists, it will maintain a position, otherwise it will change the position, we will not go into details of this. These are beyond the robots, it are used in controlled cars, 
some toys. Now, let us uh, have some small idea about signal conditioning, even though not really a crucial part of the course, but uh, just to have the idea about what these uh, sensor signals are done before they are processed in the computer or <coughs> the computer signals what happens to them before these are given to the actuator. So, signals in millivolts are need to be scaled up. So, we need voltage amplification and sometimes we need voltage level shifting because the level of the voltage is uh, let us say between 10 to 20 what we need is minus 5 to plus 5 or something. So, we not only need amplification might need level shifting, uh, we might need frequency range shifting and filtering and the mode conversion AC to DC and so on. And of course, most of these devices they use analog to digital and digital to analog converter because most of the sensors they generate analog signals whereas our computer needs digital signals and similar is the case with respect to actuator. Most of the actuators they need analog signal. So, a digital to analog converter needs to be done. Again, these are available of the self. See here a small chip here is doing analog to digital and digital to analog. So, with that uh, basic uh, introduction to various areas where these real time devices are used and the basic definition of what is real time that uh, where we uh, the actions need to take place based on some physical clock events generated by a clock or and also the other events generated in the system. So, let us uh, look at what is a real time system. If you have a system where to describe its behavior, you need to resort to some real time description, need to implicitly or explicitly use timing aspects that is a real time system. But uh, just remember that uh, we do not have to really use in every behavior, even if some of the behavior of the system requires uh, some timing description that is a real time system. Actually, most of the real time systems that we will discuss not all tasks are real time. For example, we have a logging task you know, which keep tracks, keeps track of uh, different events that occurred, actions that were taken. These occur non real time, no constraints on that they can be completed as and when required. So, one issue we need to just mention here that um, we said describe the behavior of the system and if you need a timing issue there you need to be measured using physical clock it is a real time system. But what exactly is a behavior and how do you describe? A behavior is the input output processing. When you give a input how does the output what output occurs and how does that input gets transformed to the output? that is exactly is the behavior. So, to uh, describe the behavior of a system, we will have to find out what are the input to the system, what signals or what data was input and what did the system do to generate the output that is the behavior and to describe that if we need timing issues then that is a real time system. Now, in the next one hour or so, we will try to find out some important characteristics of these systems, because based on these characteristics, we will have to design our operating system, because the operating system must facilitate that these uh, devices, uh, they stick to their characteristics, otherwise they will fail. One of the important characteristics is timing, handling I mean responding to event in certain time. So, the events are obtained through the sensors reported to the computer, these are the input event and somehow they need to be processed and some output produced before a certain time 
expires. For example, if a robo senses a obstacle and the robo is progressing, I mean moving and unless it changes its track, it will collide and the system will fail. Another example is automobile airbag system. I think we are just mentioning about it that uh, once the sensors detect a collision, the system must respond, the bag must be inflated, must be deployed within 10 millisecond or less, otherwise it will serve no purpose because the vehicle is typically in speed and uh, the damage will be done even within a fraction of a second. So, there are uh, some discussion left on these uh, different characteristics and uh, also these uh, the basic configuration of a embedded system. We need to have some idea about the CPU, the kind of memory, the kind of sensors and actuators, diagnostics, human interface, etc. So, that we will be able to appreciate our real time operating systems and when we mention that event occurred millisecond interval, we will have idea about what kind of events and how actions take place, what are the constraints in the memory, constraints in the CPU, constraints in the software. So, we will continue from this diagram in the next class, we will stop here.